You guys are just like ready for this Over the shit. last few weeks, I've started to know. Oh, it's Jesse. Oh, I miss Jesse. But I only ever get to see Jesse at BlizzCon. Notice a lot of familiar faces from the World of Warcraft community taking another look at Final Fantasy XIV. So today, I want to talk about the differences between these two games Ooh. that while sharing many similar concepts, diverge in their execution of the MMO genre. As a fan of both games and 15 year veteran of WoW, I've often thought about this subject as I now play through Final Fantasy XIV on a near daily basis since August of last year. I frequently get asked to compare <laughs> the well, two, bad, and good. the simplest way yeah. I've been able to do so is the following. World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, while Final Fantasy XIV is an RPG MMO. What does this mean besides hopefully sounding clever? I've got In cross Final eyes. Fantasy XIV, the entire creative process, the direction, the core concepts, all of it, are approached from an intrinsically different design philosophy than that of Warcraft. So it doesn't mean you can't enjoy both, it just means they're made for two very different gamers. Let me explain. I think most people have an understanding of what an MMORPG is beyond any sort of definition. What is that? Where's this Christmas present jumping puzzle? What game is that? That's Swotor. Guild Wars There 2. are expectations as to what that experience will be, which is why after playing Final Fantasy XIV, I've come to call it an RPG MMO. Because while all the multiplayer elements are there, I believe they aren't entirely necessary. If the MMO were removed and all we were left with was the RPG, the story, the music, the gameplay, it feels like the player would still have a complete experience. I this would. Is because the team behind Final Fantasy XIV, Not as from good. its inception, has put its focus squarely on storytelling. This design choice then influences every other aspect of the game, from characters to world building to music to animation, all serve to enhance the storytelling. It is without a doubt the single most vital aspect of Final Fantasy XIV. Everything comes from the story, everything is related to the story, and everything exists to service the story. So as we move forward in this video, you'll see every time I bring up a comparison or idea in Final Fantasy XIV, it's going to do be a in wild some bad? way related Probably to the story. Not. And it's because of this one fact that Final Fantasy and WoW can still feel... Whoa, 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 are you a clicker? Is this your character, Jesse? I just... Did you just click aim shot? That's not Jesse. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> Similar to a player moving between the two. Oh, but also stop it! Vastly different experience. Wait, you have... You click aim shot, but you have disengage bound? What? Let me just throw this out there. What was the story of vanilla World of Warcraft? If you had to think, it's because there was no story. There were quests, there was lore, certainly different adventures to get involved in, but no overarching story. It there was, was no man. driving force behind three. what you were doing, besides the desire to gain levels, abilities, to see what's around the next bend or explore the next zone. The story of the World of Warcraft was what you, the player, made it. It was... You don't have Earth... Sh you, don't, you don't have Lightning Shield bound, Cure Poison, Poison Cleansing... Tremor Totem's not bound? <laughs> trying to find the right Zevras in the Barrens. It was sneaking into the undeveloped Mount Hydra. It's fine. It's trying it's to fine. raid the enemy capital. It's fine. I just Those won't look at it again. experiences we remember. In fact, the most recent example of a great WoW memory I have is getting the Alliance Horde Slayer title and that achievement in BFA. The whole point I'm not is gonna that go, you kill I'm just enough not enemy players to literally be marked on the map as a bounty, and then people try to come kill you, and if you survive long enough, you get an achievement. It was... One of the most exhilarating recent memories I have in the game. I loved every moment of it. Uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, okay. if you ask someone their favorite moment, just don't look. And I did. Almost every single person is going to say theirs is related to story. Obviously, this isn't every player, as many players find the same camaraderie and accomplishment as WoW players. When what was my favorite moment in FF14? It is definitely story. Fuck, there's a lot. It's either when I... Uh, the Amarok one is definitely up there, but you guys made that special. Right? Like, that, was a, that wasn't just an FF14 moment. I, I would say my streaming FF14 moment, uncontrollably true, it was reaching Amarok. Like, uncontrollably true. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely insane. 
Um, but I think in terms of the, if I try and take away the streaming element, I think what it was actually it is still in Amarok, but it's before you go to see Emmett Selk in the house and they made the decision to have you individually talk to each of the scions before you go in instead of voice acting it. Cause it was important that you took it in and read it. I think that was, I think that was my favorite moment. I think so. Cause you, you know, it's all coming to an end. Shadow Ringers, and it, yeah, it was more personal. It was so much more personal. It wasn't Pudding Way. Seeing Vanar as the Crystal Mother, the whole fight and end of the scene was deep. Uh, yeah, I mean, Vanar walking as Heidelin through thousands of years of just being beaten and battered and still keep walking, that was a special moment. But I think that one just before you go into Emmett Salk was, uh, uh, was that one. Seto. <laughs> uh, that was a brutal moment, though. That was that was brutal. Taking was down brutal. harder bosses. But for the majority <laughs> of players, the story is not just an important part of the game. It's also something that binds the community together. With that said, after years of playing WoW, to say there isn't a fan base for the world or story building they're doing Double. would be foolish, <laughs> as I am one of them. But let's be real. The majority of players simply do not care about the plot of Warcraft. I'd have to guess that's because it was never really the driving force of the game that got them playing in the first place, and more Heresy. importantly, sticking with it. The fact is, as Blizzard moves more towards storytelling in their more recent expansions, they've developed multiple ways of getting across major plot information to players who may be interested, but it's not integral for the player's enjoyment. It's this delivery that provides- I was thinking about this the other day. Until Drasil burned, I kind of laughed. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I kind of laughed. But how would I have felt if Uldar burned and all the Lalas were burned alive? That would be crushing. That would be like absolutely devastating, right? If Uldar burned, or I mean, it's not even, you know, or something like that. Still laughing? You're not, you're not. If, if Nanamo was burned to death uh, and the rest of Uldar was burned to a crisp, you know, if Van Daniel turned up and just fucking burned it all down, it's just Lala's? No, man. Like, you'd be fucking crushed. Gridania? Less so. <laughs> Less so. If Ginger Kid and Kanasena burned. But, like, if that happened, generally, genuinely speaking, if that happened now and something like that happened, that would be crushing. But Taldrasil, I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the necessary it came out of nowhere. context to keep a player engaged. <laughs> but has also formed a complicated relationship with players who do enjoy story and world building and work. You're forgetting Pippin. Team leads, the caps. devs change, shifting the vision for each expansion to fit what is essentially the rule of cool. While main story beats are planned ahead, it's very clear that things have changed or will change based on necessity. Main characters vanish, story elements are left behind, and lore is retconned to fit with the moment. As a big old lore nerd, years of that have definitely left me kind of jaded when it comes to WoW. A silly example is years ago at BlizzCon, I asked the devs about that weird snake tail and gun drack. I was like, what is that thing? Their response then, and ever since, has pretty much been, we really don't know. Perhaps it was snuck in, perhaps it was dropped content. Who knows? All I could say is, if it was in Final Fantasy XIV, that snake tail would not only have had a purpose, but it would have shown up two expansions later as an important character in an ongoing story. <laughs> I have no idea. Yep, this is going to be one of those videos that's long enough to be split into multiple parts. Oh, God. But it's good, because it allows us to Riddles. dive a little deeper. When it comes to content, both games feature the staples of the MMORPG genre to differing degrees. Leveling, dungeons, raids, PvP, special events, grinds, and daily quests. In fact, some of the two dev teams are friends, and they definitely borrow ideas from each other all the time. Yoshi P, the director of Final Fantasy XIV, is notably a huge Blizzard fan. The difference, of course, comes from what the dev teams have decided the focus of their game should be. The best way I can simplify this is to say that Warcraft is more about the destination, and Final Fantasy XIV is more about the journey. As an example, in WoW, the leveling process in, say, a new expansion is a buffer between you and max level where the real game starts. I was once told by a friend that he always thought of it as advertisement for places that later on at max level you'll spend time grinding. Once you've leveled up, you can begin doing harder dungeons, farming gear in Mythic Plus, running raids, joining PvP battlegrounds or arenas, and doing your daily quests or grinding rep. And for years, this has not only been a pretty standard MMORPG cycle, but WoW has been the best at it. The goal, of course, is keeping players engaged and logged in. And going back to our original story discussion, 
doing most of these things continues the Warcraft story as well. In Final Fantasy XIV, it's a bit different. With the story being the most important part, this means leveling isn't just a rush to max level to experience the cool parts. The cool parts are the leveling. At max level, there are certainly raids and dailies See, these and grinds and makes PvP, me sad again. but they're, they're nowhere near the complexity of life. <laughs> leveling up a job in Final Fantasy <laughs> these little clips isn't just about the from leveling FF process me sad again. Sure, and while oh, you can no. level up an alt, <laughs> experience the other faction's story, and a lot of people enjoy that. But in Final Fantasy XIV, each job has its own story and quests associated with it. What? The fuck? What a nerd! Wait, is Miner a job? Okay, I need to jump into professions. We're doing it tomorrow. Tomorrow is professions. Tomorrow the, the, is You know, they're varying in size and scope. But, like, the Dark Knight, for example, is universally loved for being some of the best storytelling in the game. But again, story is what it's about. Most large-scale raids only have one difficulty level and are more events than actual team-building struggles. Those raids and trials that do have harder modes are canonically fan fiction versions of the 80s. events. So players who are just there for the story won't miss anything if they don't have time for harder content. PvP, while vibrant, is nothing close to that of WoW. Reputations and dailies exist, but good, though. not in a way that forces the player to spend a significant amount of time investing in them. But you're rewarded in a way that makes it feel like you're kind of getting one over on the devs for the amount of time you actually put into it. Let me give you some specific examples. Oh, Let's see why. Talk reputation Stop. grinds. Admittedly, in WoW, I haven't played much beyond the start of max level content in Shadowlands, and this may be different, but if we look at most reputation grinds, Jesse, it's usually please. something along the lines of like, you earn oh, 750 rep a day with a weekly bonus of some sort, and you need 40 to 50k rep to reach Exalted. So you're looking at, I don't know, over a month of rep farming to reach max reputation. This, of course, is part of the design philosophy, again, to keep you engaged in the world longer. In Final Fantasy XIV, while some of the older reputations are, are pretty similar, the newer ones, take Pixies for example, are designed not only to be fast, but to feel very rewarding. Every day you get three quests that take roughly 15 minutes to complete, and as a reward, you get tons of reputation, tokens that you can eventually buy rep items with, and then loads of experience. I'm talking like the, a quarter uh, of your XP bar East for three quests. And this is great because not only does it make grinding rep easy, but Tribal it also rewards you now. for okay. doing it on one of your other jobs, incentivizing you either. to level additional classes. Let's take another example. Unlocking Flight. In WoW, Unlocking Flight has always been a problem. <laughs> he laughed a thing before we started talking about it. <laughs> In WoW, he's trying, to, he's trying to keep his Jesse professional voice. In WoW. <laughs> you really had to earn. Currently, I think to unlock flight, it's something like getting Renown 44 and completing the last sigil and having completed chapter 12 of the Covenant campaign, receiving memories to unlock account-wide flying, and then you can do it in Shadowlands. In Final Fantasy XIV, while exploring the map that you're already exploring anyway, you use a compass to find little green wind orbies. And when you find them all and you complete the area story arc, you unlock flying for that specific zone. It's not account wide, but it's easy enough to get just by going through the leveling process. From a design standpoint, I love this. When I first learned this is how you got flying in Final Fantasy XIV, I was actually angry about all the time WoW made me waste. I in was Final angry Fantasy XIV, you get to experience <laughs> the zone, which is what WoW's trying to do. <laughs> I was angry do. before but I found out. XIV doesn't I was get your ability to move found through out. it quicker in the future behind some sort of grind. Which has probably got a few of you now thinking, Jesse, you're making it seem like you don't have to work for much in Final Fantasy XIV. But of course you do. There are things like fancy relic weapon grinds and stuff like that, but not nearly to the degree that WoW makes you grind out stuff. Honestly, I think we're so used to Blizzard making us go through content multiple times for months in order to unlock something like flying that anything less seems ridiculously easy. But that shouldn't be the case, gang. I don't know anyone who enjoys don't look, it, just don't look. but we still do it. It all just comes down to the fact I, that the I Final don't. Fantasy XIV devs are not trying to keep you in their world for countless hours. So it seems like everything is a little easier. The fact is the 14 devs have literally said they don't care if you log in every day. Get what you want from their game, come back when you want more. Instead, the grindy bits of Final Fantasy XIV are something entirely different. I recently saw this ad for Final Fantasy XIV and it made me laugh because Whatever your play style, there is an unforgettable adventure waiting for you. Free companies form lasting friendships and memories. I mean... 
gathering, housing, fashion, the gold saucer. Yeah, dude. I've never seen anything like this for WoW, but most Final Fantasy XIV players will tell you this is where the majority of your max level adventure lies. Look at this thing. Gathering, crafting, free companies or guilds, housing, fashion, the gold saucer, which is like a permanent version of the Darkmoon Fair. And I'll be honest, yeah, this is this is pretty much end game in Final Fantasy XIV. That's not to say XIV doesn't have challenging content for those looking for a more traditional MMO rating experience, but like the point I'm trying to make is Match. that in WoW, the end game focus is on harder and harder rating and mythics. I, I PvP, think for a WoW player arena, that makes sense. Battleground you've not played and FF14. world with all the other things in the game existing to aid in doing so. In 14, the end game focus is more diverse. Although there are savage and ultimate difficulty raids designed for those who want a more challenging experience, there's also things like building a cool <laughs> guild house or crafting a special weapon from a weird <laughs> boss drop or going on treasure hunts. There's more to do What's than this? just raiding for the sake of raiding. Speaking of crafting, one of the biggest issues I have with WoW is that crafting for so long has seemed totally pointless once looking for raid was created. There's still so much Any to gear see you and could do. craft, say, so as a leather worker, was useless for those who could just get raid gear easily. Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy XIV, gathering and crafting is very much a major part of the endgame experience. If you're curious about other things, PvP, for example, Big I mean, in this case, WoW definitely wins this one. There is PvP in Final Fantasy XIV in the form of war games, and there are many people who enjoy it. It's just that there's a wider variety and larger community in WoW. It is, after all, part of the core concept, faction warfare. This doesn't exist in XIV. There are no warring player factions. In fact, much of the story is about getting all the nations of the world on the same team. The funny thing is, as WoW attempts to add more story, the PvP they're doing makes less and less sense narratively. And that's, I mean, like just the tip of the iceberg right? of the endgame experience. There's a lot more to talk about, but since we are talking endgame, I think we should flip it and do the starting experience. Going back to the design philosophies of the two games, we can see differences in the premise of each and how it affects your intro into the game. In World of Warcraft, you start your experience as just one of the many faces in service of your chosen faction. Over time, your actions in defeating various threats increase your importance to the world. In Final Fantasy XIV, you are literally the warrior of light, the chosen hero from moment one. Jumping. There's no denying your importance to the story. The entire narrative revolves around you, even though initially you're not recognized as such. I mean, that's what you are. Quickly proving yourself to the world. From that point on, every character not only acknowledges you, but they recognize the importance of your role over theirs. So add that to the story being the most important element, and you'll see how this might be a daunting task for some new players. Much of the 14 starting experience is, it's pretty slow. World I had building, to find lambs. character introduction, <laughs> lasting roughly the first 50 levels. I actually think this is one of the biggest problems Final Fantasy 14 has, as it's a hard sell to explain how phenomenal this game becomes only after you put in 40 hours. But that's a I mean, <laughs> I'm so thankful I had you guys for A Realm Reborn because I enjoyed A Realm Reborn so much. I had a great time. But everybody I pl everybody I've spoke to has tried to do it off stream or not had the like the benefits that I have had. They can't get through A Realm Reborn. <laughs> they can't get. They're like, this is just bullshit. This is bullshit. But I had such a fucking. I have nothing but positive memories of A Realm Reborn. I had the best time, even with the post stuff. Yeah. Exactly what I was told and what I have told others. Because it's true. The strong connection to narrative hurts the starting experience, especially for new players who may have friends playing or seen an amazing moment from I a recent basically expansion, had a really good but they single can't play player themselves RPG. without playing through a hundred hours of story or paying for a skip and finding themselves completely disconnected from the plot. And that is a real shame because the game uses all of that story and setup to build out oh, the rest of the world. Remember we didn't have the crawlers. Let's not get our, memory, our history twisted. The crawlers did exist before I finished A Realm Reborn, but I refused to join a guild until I'd played through it. <laughs> so it did exist, but not for me. I didn't see I didn't see the free company house until we were starting Heaven's Ward, I don't think. It was So later. if you skip over the starting experience, the amount of stuff you miss is mind-boggling. And because the story is so well told, and all the characters and locations and factions, etc., are so perfectly fit into the puzzle. That is the main plot, that when twists happen, they make perfect sense. When reveals are made, it's like, oh yeah, of course. All because of that level 1 through 50 experience laying the foundation. 
And as I've yep. said, I've experienced both ends of this. Years ago, when the game first came out, I gave it a shot, and around level 40 was totally burnout. It wasn't until I returned last year looking for something new that I gave the game a second chance on the recommendation of a friend. I'm so glad I listened, because for a fan of a story like me, what this game offers is a fantastic experience. Sadly, the reason behind Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Slow Start can be traced back to its origins <laughs> as a reboot of the disaster that was the original Final Fantasy XIV. The budget was small, the timetable was short. Oh, and gotta it want play it. It isn't until the later patches of A Realm Reborn and the release of the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, that the game truly shines. The production value skyrockets, the writing is less long-winded, the voice actors change. I do, Just I about do. everything is better than where it started. And universally, it's everyone wants to play Star Wars Galaxy. Which is man. why I assume the free trial, with memes and all, includes Heaven's Ward. If you're gonna keep playing the game, it's the first expansion that's gonna get you. What's totally insane about all of that is only by sticking with it can you then truly appreciate the slow burn a Realm Reborn was and all the ideas it introduces that later become very important. It's like when your parents gave you some advice as a kid and you didn't listen and now you're 30 and you're like, damn, that was good advice. Does I it make you wonder how they're gonna go with 6.1? Because I, I, everybody says this. If you played A Realm Reborn, even if you didn't, like, enjoy it at the time, it all paid off so massively later on, right? It paid off so, so much later on in the game. I really wonder how they're going to adapt that it's, while they're restarting the story in 6.1. It's going to be some sort of... I mean, have they... They said they planned for the next 10 years, right? <laughs> so you've got to imagine, and I imagine, like... I imagine a lot of big lore heads... I gotta be looking at every detail that happens in 6-1. Because they might be dropping hints, or probably are dropping stuff that's not gonna pay off until three expansions later. That's probably in their map somewhere. Is they're gonna be putting things in 6-1 and 6-2 or whatever that is not gonna pay off until then. Like, you could talk about Mericidia and stuff like that, but I think that's probably relatively soon. It'll be subtle I things they're putting in. <laughs> but again... How do you sell that to people? Thank you so Meanwhile, much, Meanwhile, the WoW Thank starting you. experience is much more welcoming to new Enjoy players. Enjoy the Giga with they that. keep updating it and changing it. A thing Thank Final so Fantasy XIV can't do without damaging the plot it's trying to set up. Because Warcraft doesn't concern itself with this. They now offer multiple ways to level, a special starting zone designed to teach new players. They have streamlined the process of getting your character to the end game, which, as we discussed, is a core design philosophy. But this means, depending on when you started playing, your story experience in World of Warcraft could be entirely different from another player. Some moments I may have experienced years ago are no longer in the game, making True. it so things that bind players and keep them engaged in the game are not story, but it's progression systems, guild dynamics, and faction conflict, which I think explains your why people enjoy no playing True classic, Fear, as it has all the things I just listed, <laughs> but also a shared sense of existing in the same <laughs> world, Warlock which I feel no like I think many fear. of you would say the oh, current iteration man. of WoW does not have. Oh, Another way to Jesus. look at this is how new content is delivered. If we look at the two most recent completed content cycles in both WoW and 14, uh -oh. the picture we get of everything I've been talking about becomes more clear. In WoW, the new content starts with the release of a trailer, a big budget, stunningly well-made, sometimes shocking reveal. It's usually a way for Blizzard to show the first major inciting story moment. This is something like Sylvanas breaking the Helm of Domination or Deathwing destroying the world. Then, before launch, there's a book and maybe some short stories about major characters involved in the next expansion. We'll get a pre-patch event, and then the expansion will release. And for the most part, every WoW expansion follows a similar formula. We get a short burst of main story BFA. before pausing for leveling content and eventually returning to the main plot. Then a major raid is released, and the story for the main plot continues as we get a series of patches culminating in the last patch of the expansion, and the showdown with the big bad. Then the cycle begins again with a new trailer. Oh, because Panda. of its heavily Jesus, story based man. nature, Thank you. almost all of the content in 14 That's sweaty new Giga is Cowers in the game. chat. So, in the previous Thank expansion, you so much, Panda. That's so patch, generous of you. you'll get Thank hints you, of a new story. By the time the fifth major patch rolls around, you'll have more information, uh, important details, or new jobs will be hinted at. And then, you know, around the same time, we get the trailer. <laughs> Unlike <laughs> WoW, it's not a single moment, but a series of vignettes and a hint of things to come in the next expansion. 
Then at launch, the main story is experienced and the completed the throughout the leveling light. process. Or why the first the major patch and so on are there to wrap up loose ends, tell new smaller stories either via raid or a series of max level trials, or introduce new areas that serve as a way to grind out special weapon skins. And then, by the end of the third major patch, the story of the expansion is wrapped up. And then the fourth patch continues the trend of hinting at what will be in the new expansion. So once again, I'm sure the obvious difference comes down to the initial design choice by the two dev teams. The reason the Warcraft patch cycle is what it is, is to keep players engaged longer. So if you're a fan of story, for example, you need to keep with it through all the patches to see the end. While Final Fantasy XIV, designed to deliver story most of all, gives you a completed one at launch, then adds additional adventures afterwards. Eden's worth finishing. Wasn't my best raid story. The most notable difference Eden's, in Eden's gameplay good. between the two, I think, is to start, the global cooldown in Final Fantasy XIV is 2.5 seconds. So when you're level 10, for Still example, never bothered and me. you only have three I thought abilities, it, would, but it's it never bothered seems me. like there's a lot of downtime. Later on, as you unlock other off-cooldown skills or increase your stats to lower your GCD, this changes, but for the start, it definitely feels pretty slow. This also translates into differences between the spell and ability rotations of the two games. Warcraft is more reactionary. <laughs> Build up a bar or wait for a crit to trigger an ability, while Final Fantasy XIV is more proactive, where the player weaves a pattern of combos together to create a string of pre-planned attacks. Even the procs in Final Fantasy XIV are associated with patterns and planning. Combat in WoW is like a street brawl, and Final Fantasy XIV is like a dance. And because 14 is more of a dance, the combat is more spectacular, and the spell effects are way more flashy than those in WoW. And for the most part, spell effects aren't necessarily designed with large groups in mind, unlike Warcraft. So when you're in a 24-man raid and all the effects are going off, it can sometimes feel blinding, so much so that there are options in 14 to decrease or turn them off for other players. Speaking of making changes to the game, 14 has a pretty amazing HUD customization in the base okay, game. Okay, move it back. Yeah, Well, good. you can do a lot more <laughs> with the shit. various add-ons, and wow, uh, 14 uh, gives you enough tools to customize your experience so that you don't feel the absence of add-on support. This UI customization allows for the use of a controller, which the game was designed with in mind, allowing for cross-platform play between PC and PlayStation. This allows for some being toxic. player just, interface you know, options and looks, letting you clutter your screen with as much information or as that. little as you want. And we can't forget about the accessibility of players who simply can't use a mouse and keyboard. Accessibility can be found in 14 in the form of universal language on markers and effects. I'm sure that as you've watched this video, you've noticed in the Final Fantasy 14 segments, the same markers on the ground over and over and over again, to the point where players can have some idea of what's coming their way based on the effect. They understand what's about to happen and what's required. Another major gameplay difference, which is probably what we should have started with, is the ability for one character to play every job or this class is one of the, the best game features of the game. If you choose Black Mage to start, for example, like I do, and you end up hating it, like I did, then you can switch to another job and try something new. Fall in love with something new, like a Red Mage, or a Warrior, or a Dragoon, like I did. And 14 is designed with this one character leveling multiple things in mind. WoW, on the other hand, is designed around having to create multiple alts to try different classes. But unlike 14, each of these new characters has some sort of racial ability or special action, and, and 14 doesn't have that. It doesn't mean you can't level alts in 14, but it's unnecessary to experience all the game has to offer. Warcraft does, however, have more overall combat diversity, with the option to choose talents and spec out your character in fun, weird ways. I can't a lot believe of I didn't know FF14 had no talents. Also, the classes in WoW seem more wild and vibrant compared to that of Final Fantasy XIV. There are no Demon Hunter or Brewmaster analog, for example. It does have a blue mage, but it's treated as more of a joke class with wacky overpowered abilities that isn't really allowed in current content. Also, WoW really nails raiding and PvP. It's what the game was designed for, and they do it very well. The raids in WoW <laughs> are larger my class and more a joke. the PvP is more varied and complex. <laughs> but Final Fantasy XIV does something very fun with its dungeons, raids, and trials by including synced, unsynced, and minimum item level settings. You can Bonsai change echo, the difficulty baby. of a dungeon, for example, to be exactly how it was when you first ran it in your low-level gear, or to cheese the hell out of it at max level. The last thing of note is that when crafting Blue, it's not a job, it's content. I do need to try it. I will. Than WoW. Put it on the list. Put it on the list, man. We'll get there. are actually separate jobs, separate skills, oh, I can't separate look. stories, and separate gear oh, that you can play without ever doing the main story. Although you'd, you'd need it to unlock some zones, there are whole events built around using these crafting and gathering jobs. Building a city, that? for example. And as I mentioned before, 
crafting actually makes viable gear, unlike WoW, whose crafters are mostly useless once people can do looking for raid. Imagine you're gonna get tired of hearing me say it, you probably by already are, half. but Fuck, story man. plays a major that role in the aesthetics of 14 I versus two million WoW gold in this. Both I games look by very good, let me be clear, but they each have their own visual style. WoW is slightly more cartoony and exaggerated, everyone has giant muscles, even the fat dudes and the gnomes. 14 is a bit more subdued in all Rude. regards. Even the, the colors are more toned down. Some might call the character designs a bit anime. This is tame. Meanwhile, the WoW character designs are more diverse than 14. See, this is not anime. This is fine. Fucking FF14 is the weeb game. This, this is totally fine. This is totally as well. Fine. Trolls, undead, humans, pandas. In 14, yeah. it's more like human, tiny human, cat human, horny human. The biggest difference I've noticed comes down to 14's emotive characters and WoW's wider array of visually diverse zones. These emotive Panda, characters what are you so doing, man? can easily work in numerous oh cutscenes and match their voices. Again. In order Holy to do the shit. same thing in WoW, custom Giga crafted scenes, all through the chat. which That's take time welcome, and limit man. the number that can welcome, be included. Dude. That's not to say that Warcraft characters can't show emotion or Final Fantasy doesn't have visually diverse zones, but each does their thing better. WoW can get more wild with their visual design because they aren't limited by players on older consoles. The PS3 version of 14 was still available until 2017, which means the PS4 version will be limiting players for a few years still. Because its limits are fewer and the yeah, devs but wait can till update the PS5 and change version. their graphics more frequently, yeah. WoW can create a more wild, yeah, outlandish, baby. and visually striking environment for players to explore. And because 14 was started with storytelling in mind, characters' faces are designed to show a wider array of emotions. WoW, on the other hand, added story after the fact, so the game wasn't designed to have a lot of close-up facial animations. So, as they add new in-game cinematics, many of the ones we're getting now seem to have these weird, flappy jaw yapping things going on. And that stands out from the other, higher quality cinematic stuff we're used to getting in WoW. Oh, so Music good appreciation time! also another thing worth pointing out, as it again is a perfect example of my original thesis. Like the graphic design of the games, they both have good music. But similar to WoW's visual style, Final Fantasy XIV's musical style is far more diverse and wild and fun. In Warcraft, music is mostly ambient, used to set the mood of Grizzly a zone Hills is good dungeon, though. Usually something Come on catchy, now. Grizzly Hills is legit. Not all that intrusive. But many times, because of its generalized nature, there are moments where it might not fit the events that are on screen in an epic boss fight, for example. There's plenty of times I remember struggling through a raid to get to the final boss, and the music was pretty much the same as when I started the raid. Meanwhile, in 14, because the music, like everything else, is connected to the story, it's more moment to moment than WoW. Again, it's not like WoW doesn't do story moment music, or Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have ambient zone themes, but they both do their own thing way more. Final Fantasy XIV has musical themes for sad moments, and happy moments, and silly moments, and tense moments. It sometimes even tells a story. Their theme song, you know, like light motifs, and more importantly, <laughs> battle music. Engage, cut, jump! My man. My man. It's just so so chuffed so we got good. that played on the echo Nothing stream. Nothing makes for the race wiping or first. learning a fight more tolerable <laughs> than a catchy you guys song are so in good. the background. Truthfully, Final Fantasy XIV just has a larger variety of music and uses it better than WoW, which is It was crazy sick, right? It was so good. I remember listening to the soundtrack for WoW Legion and thinking how great it was, only to find out there were some songs not even used in the game, or if they were, I don't remember or missed it. I recall multiple versions of Anduin's theme, 
only for him to barely be involved in the main Legion storyline and his theme to show up like I think it was on the day the jailer or fell. That's so crazy I was like, to you know. You have to put Shadowbringers on. Jailer's dying today. That making music. I think it's just and before I started Bruce casting on the day the jailer died. And remember Elite Torn Chieftain? Final Fantasy XIV has a band of devs called the Primals. Except they don't just do meme songs. They play like all the hits from the game. Lyrics and all. And let me tell you, they got some bangers. The difference is, while ETC was phased out of live events, the Primals are the highlight that everyone looks forward to. It's as if the WoW community thought ETC was kind of lame. And Final Fantasy XIV fans are like, more primals, please. I need to see what they're like live. So there's one last thing to talk about. I need to about, go to FanFest, sure. It won't I need be to get my ass to at all. The communities. Back your bags, Chris. I've been in the WoW community long enough to have formed a pretty substantial theory about it. I know I'm going to get lots of crap for this one, but I think the general notion is that it's, it's pretty toxic. Yes, your personal guild might be awesome, but generally, <laughs> I think we can all agree there are high levels of toxicity in the WoW community. I've never I counted it that badly. This stems from the nature of the game itself. I do run a show WoW weekly that talks about it. is based in conflict, so. a game where two factions are pitted against each other from the beginning, so players already have an established enemy or other to focus their eye Just on. Just don't be shit. It is thematically ingrained <laughs> if you're not in shit, the community you're culture. Fine. And not only is player versus That's player my part of the Solves game, all your problems. but so Just is competition on a PvE fine. level. With world first and server first and more at a macro level, and then tools like DPS meters at a micro level to determine who is the best in the current party. Everyone is judging everyone at all times in Warcraft. It can feel Correctly so as well. Even WoW's more cooperative events can seem like competition between players. As okay, players are fight for that longer, rage spot. learn more and think they know more, Biases form, opinions valid or otherwise take root, and soon the forums are littered with waste. You know, toxic. 14, at least in my experience, has been different. And I, it's hard to explain because, sure, there must be toxicity Jesus. in the community. I, I've heard of it. I've never seen it. And maybe that's streamer privilege. Maybe it's just I'm very lucky. I don't know. But most people, if you ask, will tell you how nice and wonderful and kind the 14 community is, but it's also jarring. If you're a WoW player coming to the Final Fantasy 14 community, there's a lot to understand that's different. Let me give you a great example. Rare mobs, or in the case of 14, ranked mobs. In WoW, if you see G5? a rare monster, you find a way to kill that thing as fast as you can, you grab friends, you grab guilds, you want baby. that special drop. In Final Fantasy 14, that's frowned upon by most of the community. I found this out one day when I saw a rare, and asked my free company, my guild, for help. And they were like, dude, wait for the hunt train. And I was like, what? What the hell are you talking about? It's right here, right now. And they explained, that's not how the community does it. When all the rares are finally spawned, hunt trains form, and like 100 players move from zone to zone, killing this them, true? each getting credit for the kills and any sort of rewards. This idea baffled me. I was like, I, I am here right now. Nice. Well done. What if I'm not online later? I, I have to pass up game? the kill just cause and they were like yeah <laughs> i know it sounds crazy but having done multiple hunt trains now i understand it completely and i actually prefer it it's almost like if wow had this same concept i may have actually seen a time lost proto drake once or twice <laughs> warcraft eventually had moments like this for now gone but it's not on the same level this camaraderie in the 14 community translates to how they treat new players for the most part as well Sprouts, as they are lovingly called, are new players with a little icon next to their name. Normally, one would assume an icon next to your name letting everyone know that you have no idea what you're doing would seem like you just got yourself a scarlet letter and became a pariah. But in Final Fantasy XIV, it's the exact opposite. Instead of trolling or treating them poorly, most players cheer them on or offer advice and tips and dungeons. It makes it easier to understand if someone has I would no also clue what's going get on. Bonus you can instantly see their new. As well. they and encourage it's okay. that behavior. And the game even Possibly. rewards players with bonuses for having yeah, yeah. them in your group. Good and that's job, what Jesse. I think is so special about the I community fight. in 14. I've seen plenty of players try new classes or a build or whatever in both WoW and 14. And people can get intimidated about being yelled at for sucking or not knowing something. But in 14, that little sprout icon lets players know immediately that you're newer to the game. So they have an expectation that you might not know some things. And it makes it easier to ask, which is honestly the biggest problem in WoW. New players are always afraid to ask what to do. True. Just as an example of how this mentality rubs <laughs> off on you, 
I was doing my 14 <laughs> roulettes or, or dungeon dailies. It's it your video, the dude. Omega raid. When it popped, I was in a group of almost all sprouts. For those of you, we need to do who Omega again. Know, this fight is what you would call a, a complicated dance. We wiped a lot, and in my guild chat. I was cursing up a storm. I was so upset that I had to go through this thing that I thought was going to take me five minutes, but I'm here at like minute 30. But in party chat with the Sprouts, I was like, we can do this. Come on. I'll teach you how to do this fight. I've often thought about what Sprouts and WoW would be like. And the only thing I can think of is that it would mostly be people dropping from parties that they showed up in. <laughs> Again, this isn't to say the Final Fantasy XIV community is perfect. Obviously, if it's a 15 key, all sorts yeah, probably. Of games, but the general nature of the player base Seems a bit more relaxed. Yes, oh, someone will the, tell the me I'm doing something on wrong with my stream, score if you were but that's sprout. every game for everyone. Minus a thousand the points. The biggest difference, I think, is the Final Fantasy XIV community does not tolerate a lot of the stuff that WoW does. The crackdown on bad actors is swift and immediate. And some of you may be like, well, that doesn't sound cool. I guess for the people Stop who clicking. don't want to deal with that stuff, it's pretty cool. I don't know. The last big takeaway I have on community is this. The WoW player base seems always ready to attack That would their be game, what it is, even yeah. Even while loving it. Looking for and the more, Final Fantasy XIV community no is always trying to defend their game, even if it doesn't need it. Well, we've got a conclusion. So, you've made it some 30 minutes into a YouTube video, and really? you find yourself here. Sick. This Good was job, all Jesse. just sort of a long-winded way of Hildy. saying again yeah. what I'm sure I made clear in the first five minutes. But I really wanted to expand upon the differences Do between we need WoW Godpa in the conclusion? and how there are players who like each of these. So I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Sure, there's definitely going to be something I missed or couldn't find a way oh, to fit in the cool video. That's a good way of doing Patreon, that's comments are for, that's I suppose. Awesome. So please, if you have something to add or additional thoughts or insights, or if you think I'm way off, let me know. This video was done out of love for both games and the knowledge that each has its own audience. And it's okay to like one and not the other. I hope the takeaway is that if you enjoy story games as much as I Jeremiah's do, check out 14. And and if you could care less, you're probably Why are all the names on our website for supporters? Like, That's what juicy it comes down tits. To, at least for me. Anyway, Robin thanks Cock. so much. Thank you to I do know all why. the amazing so you want patrons me to say it make videos like this possible. Please, if you like this, share it with your friends or give it a like. That'd be swell. That's what you uh, I would love it yeah. if you would consider subscribing. And hit the bell and do all the things that you know you have to do on YouTube in order to see a video these days. But that's oh, it. Oh, you got Primal's live video? Thank you so oh, cool, much. Cool, 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 cool. And I will see you in game. That was awesome. It was um I'd say it was definitely leaning more towards the uh FF uh F FF how good it is. But I think that's what we all felt when you moved away from WoW a little bit. It was definitely tailored towards the the wow guys, but it was really